Hi everybody, it's Heather from Willow Rose Soap Company and uh, we're going to make what I call the Unsinkable Molly Brown today. It's based on the original soap that was used in the first class passengers uh, WC or wash closet on a Titanic. Um, and the original bar was white and that's how I usually make it, but today I'm going to use my, the same recipe I always use, but I'm going to use um, rose buds and rose petals on the top. I'm going to build up the sides and kind of do like a plop top and then insert um, some of the petals and then some of the buds. Um, let's see, um, I'm going to add some... Um, um, Sodium lactate and some kaolin clay, which helps with scent retention. Uh, it's great for moisture. Uh, it's great for sensitive skin. It helps pur purify and nourish the skin. It's also very soothing to the skin and adds slip to the soap, so it's not doesn't feel hard. Or you know, I'm sure you've had like a cheap bar of. Um, detergent that you use on your skin from the store and it just feels really rough on your skin. This helps to soothe and keep the moisture in your skin. And I'm also going to add some marshmallow root powder, which is all, it makes a great lather and it's really nourishing for your skin and it also helps to rehydrate your skin. Um, this is one of the luxury bars and I always, I do this anyway, but with, particularly with this soap, um, since it helps retain so much of your natural oils anyway, I kind of just let myself air dry and while I'm still damp, I put on my moisturizer or my body butter. Um, so, let's see. Um, we're scenting it with a lemon essential oil. That's what was in the original. Um, and a rose absolute. Um, and a little bit of rose floral wax because the rose absolute is so expensive. The rose floral wax, really all it is, is the wax that's left over after the rose petals are pressed to get the the rose essential oil. So I add a little bit of that and a little bit of the rose absolute and it's, it's nice and strong and it doesn't break the bank. And then um, I'm going to add a little titanium dioxide for a nice white bar and I think I'm going to add a little Vanna, no not Vanna White, I'm going to add um, some Phyllis Diller for a little bit of a iridescent look to the bar and then after we put the rose petals on I'm going to um, put on some just a little bit of glitter from Mad Oils called Sparkle Plenty. So let's add our um, additives into our oils and we'll mix those together and then we'll add our lye solution which is just lye, water, and some Tussa Silk. So I'm going to add a tablespoon, a little less than a tablespoon of the marshmallow root powder. And I got that from Sapphire Blue. I, I really love their company. They're based out of um, Canada, so it takes, takes a little longer, but it's worth it. They have some things that you can't find anywhere else. I just they just came out with um which is like just like the rose floral wax, but this is the tube rose floral wax. And it smells it is so strong it, you wouldn't even need the size of a pea to scent probably an entire pound bar of soap. Okay then we're gonna add a tablespoon cannon clay. A heaping tablespoon. I got the, you know, they get, I guess from bulk apothecary. They seem to have the best price on the larger bag of the white kale and clay. Okay, let's get our additives mixed in. Okay, turn your volume down. Um, here we go.
Okay. Um, and I was going to tell you uh, that I use uh, olive oil, coconut oil, tallow, uh, mango butter. I think the original actually called for shea butter, but I'm, I prefer mango butter, but it really doesn't matter. That's just a personal preference um, and castor oil. And actually the company is still in business that makes the original soap, but they have started using petroleum products and um, the fragrance oils that are not um, phthalate free and you know they have sodium low sulfate, things like that in it. So it's a really nice soap, so that's why I want to do this. I actually got the idea from um, my husband and I went to Gatlinburg and they have a Titanic museum there. And they actually had an original box of the soap. And that is what inspired me to do this. So we're going to do our fragrance oil. I do a little... Um, less rose than of the lemon because it comes out so much stronger. And I want 1.13 of oil, of essential oil. And as you know, essential oils are expensive, so these bars are more expensive than some of my others just because of um, some of the ingredients, mainly the essential oils and the aloes. Okay, so we've got that measured out. I wish you could smell it. It smells just so good. I always strain my lye water, particularly if um, I've added Tussa silk to it, just in case some of it didn't completely dissolve. Which in this case it looks like most of it did. And I always uh, set my lye in an ice bath so it cools more quickly. I like to soak preferably at room temperature or a little below. Okay, I want to give this a little buzz. But in this case, since we're doing just a straight white bar, I'm not, I'm not worried if it comes even to a thick trace. So let's see, I'm gonna add some titanium dioxide that I have mixed up. the mica from uh, Mad Oils. They also have Vanna White. I like that one too, but it does, it's not quite as iridescent. It's more almost like a TD.
course it doesn't have to be perfectly white. I don't mind a cream colored bar. I just don't want it to be yellow or beige. If I hadn't used the marshmallow root powder, it would I probably wouldn't even have to use hardly any TD. But I really like the benefits of the marshmallow root. So it's a trade-off. But it's worth it. And then of course the lemon oil, essential oils, is gonna have an effect on the color as well. Actually, no, I'm going to separate a little out for the that I'm going to use for the top and add a little more to that. Go ahead and add our sodium lactate. This is just so I can build up the top a little bit when we put the rosebuds in. I'm gonna do this just a little bit more.
I don't want it to get that chalky look. Okay, that's good. I want that just to sit and thicken up. I'm gonna add a little bit more TV to this and some more. I'm going to do the Vanna White this time. And yesterday I made um, the skin, uh, the soap for sensitive skin with the carrot puree and the oats and everything. And I'm going to wait one more day to unmold it since I did such a high super pad on it. Um, so I'm hoping to cut it tomorrow, this tomorrow and maybe we can cut that one at the same time. And tomorrow, um, I'm going to do a, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet, but the perfume, or the scent I had mixed up, there's a perfumery we go to in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and uh, they made up a scent for me that um, I called uh, Summer, no, I'm sorry, Springberry, and it smells really, really good, and I had some scraps left over from a bar that I made with that scent, and then a, and some other scraps from kumquat and I'll show them to you. And I'm gonna use those in a bar of soap and they smell together they smell just it makes you want to eat them. And then I use the cookie cutter and do these little melt and pours which unfortunately you can't really see. It's a peach color a nice dark peach color with uh, glitter in it, but it's not showing up on the on the uh, monitor very well. And then a smaller size, so that'll go on top. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. I might use this same recipe because it's nice and thick, so the uh, embeds will stay suspended where I want them to and not all sink to the bottom. That's ready to pour. Usually not this messy, but I'm not feeling well. My husband fell uh, in our driveway and broke or fractured two ribs, dislocated his shoulder, and um, fractured his sternum. So he is laid up in bed and I'm supposed to be going to my kids. They're, they belong to Actors Point Studio here in Hendersonville, Tennessee and uh, they have a play tonight. So I'm kind of afraid to leave him here alone but I also don't, I'm not gonna, don't want to miss their play. And I'm not feeling well either. I got was in the hospital with pneumonia 
I've been out for not even a week and I'm already starting to feel run down and <clears throat> just that if you've ever had pneumonia that feeling you start to get in your lower lobes of your chest it's not fun probably appreciate it if I looked even see if I could tell what I was doing I'm going to take this over here and give it a really good whack. There we go. Okay. Pop some of these little bubbles on the top. to be nice and thick like piping consistency and it's not there yet so I'm gonna um, wait about 15 minutes probably maybe hopefully it won't take that long and I'll bring you back and I'll uh, show you what I'm gonna do with the roses I'll be back in just a few Okay, this, uh, actually what set up the mold, the set that was in the mold set up faster than what I had separated for whatever reason, but, um, this is an experiment, so we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to place a few outside. anyone ever made um, this type of soap before or in his historic soap or anything just unusual that um, is not mainstream because I love to hear comments and feedback um, on YouTube on Facebook on my blog which um, I list everything on the drop-down box on all my videos. Hopefully this turns out pretty and not horribly ugly. But if it does, I can always cut the top off and um, uh, shred it and use it for something else. But that's why soaping is fun because you get to experiment and play. And that's your job. I was a nurse, an RN, for 15 years, and I was a surgeon, well, I was an ER nurse, and then I went to surgery, and it ruined my back. I have uh, three herniated discs, arthritis from my C1, all the way down to my S1. I fractured my sacrum, or my tailbone, and so I just had to go back to school to get my um, PhD in chemistry, um, so, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand, the chemistry part of soap making, which a lot of people don't realize how much soap making is chemistry, is a science, and it's also art too, so two of the things I love most, science and art. I get to put them together and play. And my kids are great. Um, 
they inherited the artistic gene. My daughter sings. She is across our fingers. I'm going to be on um, America's Got Talent. She had a private audition. Her uh, America's Got Talent contacted her voice coach and wanted to see some videos of Alex, that's my daughter. Well, her name's Alexandra, but we call her Alex. Um, and she got a private audition. And they said they'll be, they expect to audition over 130,000 people. Now, not private auditions, they only do about 40 to 50 private auditions. But these are like walk-in auditions. So, uh, we'll find out at the end of April. And then my son, he's the actor in the family. He's a, he's a ham, which is funny because when he was younger, he was so painfully shy. But now he gets up on stage and he just lights up. And I don't know where he got his talent for accents, because he can do all kinds of accents. Russian, Ukraine, Czech, French. All different English dialects. It's so fun to watch. And my kids are, they grow, have grown so fast. It seems like I just yesterday I was changing diapers and now I've got a almost 17 year old, almost 15 year old. My son will be 17 in, in May and my daughter will be 15 in June. And I don't think, I think I look my age, but people always ask me, if, when, did you have your kids when you were 16? No, I didn't. I'm 40. I was young, but not that young. 23 and 25, I had them, so. Wouldn't change it for anything. All my nieces and nephews are little, so I still, I have babies to play with. And I want to say um, thank you to Clyde Yoshida from Vibrant Soaps for doing our uh, judging, I don't like to say judging, but um, choosing our winners for our soaping challenge. It was a use of color challenge, which was a lot of fun. I, I did not enter because I was hosting it. But it's a Willow Rose Soap Group. No, I'm sorry, Willow Rose Soap Club on Facebook. And you just said it's a closed group because of all the, if you're a soaper, you know what I mean. There's a lot of uh, cattiness and cruel things said. And, and I don't allow that in, in our group. We have a really awesome group of women and men. And... If you're interested we'd love to have you you just send a request and I'm sure if you're if you're even if you're new it just open or you've been soaping for 15 years if if you're there to um, you know to make friends and have fun and learn and teach and 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 just you know have a good time with each other then you are more than welcome and we always have a really good time. And the winners of the soap challenge were Sarah Milroy from Spicy Pine Cone, um, Jenny Felix, and um, oh my goodness, my mind just went blank. I can see your face. I'll put it in the drop down box unless it comes to me in the before I'm finished. Why is this not working? This is why I use, I usually use a tea strainer. And I saw someone using one of these squeeze bottles and it looked easy.
but forgive me. You know who you are, who won, and I know who you are. I can see your face, and I will, I promise you on my next vi video, I will give you a shout out for winning, because you, you were uh, second place, if I'm not mistaken. But I will list the winners at the bottom. But everybody who entered did an awesome job. He had, he even said he had a really hard time choosing. Well, we all had a lot of fun doing it, and I had a lot of fun getting to see all the entries. But anyway, here is the unsinkable Molly Brown, or I might call it something else, even though it's my. And single Wally Brown recipe, I may call it uh, Rose Garden or or something like that, or English Rose Garden. Or if you have any suggestions for a name, and I pick your name, uh, like leave it in the comment section. If I pick your name, I'll send you a bar for free. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to cut this tomorrow along with the um, natural soap we did yesterday. So I'm Heather with... Willow Rose Soap Company, and I will see you soon. It came to me, Jackie, forgive me, Jackie McAvoy was one of the winners of the soap challenge. So I will see you um, when we come back to cut the soaps. Bye.